Hello folks. So that's my solar telescope. I just finished up a live stream and I put the cover back on. I was just too lazy to put it back in the garage, but I got to do that pretty soon. And here's the Rasa. I took the tarp off so you can take a look at it. But I mean, not that you haven't seen it before, but I finished two more deep space objects and I want to show them to you right now. Okay, so there's no real theme to this video. It's going to be a quick one. I just wanted to show you guys the latest two objects that I captured. And this one here is with the Rasa and my one-shot color camera. It's probably one of the most famous planetary nebulas of all. It's the, the Dumbbell Nebula. And I think, um, I think it came out pretty good. Um, I captured it at the same time I was capturing the Andromeda Galaxy because I that the Andromeda Galaxy didn't come into view until 1 a.m. So I was doing this in the first half of the night. So it's about two and a half hours just like the Andromeda Galaxy was. And I tell you, after after my, my last two captures of the Andromeda Galaxy and this one, I don't think I will ever go back to a mono camera for a broadband. I really like capturing in one shot color as opposed to mono where you have to use luminance, red, green, blue. I don't think I want to deal with that anymore. Uh, I'm getting really good. I like the results at least. I think I'm getting really good results with, with the one shot color. And I like the star color. I like the color of the nebula. And let me show you something else here. This is what I captured last year with my Explorer Scientific, which has double the focal length. And this is what I captured um, just now with my one-shot color camera. And this is a narrow band on the left. And this is the one-shot color on the right. And I, I mean, obviously, I have a lot more magnification. But it, it's just a lot of fun doing um, one-shot color. And this, this is a good nebula to do uh, broadband with one-shot color. Because it's, it's actually is very bright in either narrow band and broadband. So let me show you the next thing I captured. Okay, these are the ancient remains of a supernova, a giant star explosion. And this might be the most famous example of a supernova. This is the, the Veil Nebula. This is the east part of the Veil Nebula. And this section is called Pickering's Triangle. Now I couldn't fit the whole thing there's also the West Veil off to the right, but I did pick up a pretty good portion of it. And again, this is with the Rasa, but this time I did use a mono camera and HA filters, HA and oxygen filters. And I think it came out pretty good again, except this one I'm torn on. I could not decide on the background. Um, either this one or... I used levels to bring out the, in Photoshop, to bring out the red that was kind of in the background, but that you can't really see in this one. So it's between this and that, which I, I'm, I'm torn. I, I think this one is, is, is more common, but I sure like that red background. It looks more like the blood and guts of a supernova, a giant star explosion. So maybe I'll find something in between. So what do you guys think? That or that? That's a tough one. But either way, I, I think they both look cool on a, a metal print. Maybe I'll find something in between. I might still work on this one. So the, the picture you see in the end might be a cross between the two. Maybe. So anyway, it's a quick video. That's all I had to share. I didn't go through my steps this time because... It's still pretty similar to the previous video I did of the Andromeda Galaxy. So, okay, that's all I got, folks, and I'll see you later.